Hello everybody, welcome to this special presentation. Today we have a special guest, Mr. Yaki Yane, uh, CFO, COO of uh, Pluristem Therapeutics. It's a company that's trading on the NASDAQ. Right now this company and the technical situation is pretty interesting though because it's in a neutral formation. So the buying opportunity on Pluristem Therapeutics is higher than 419. So that said, let's introduce Mr. Yane. Mr. Yane, thanks you for coming by. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. Excellent. Uh, so explain to us what your technology about. So we are a biotechnology company. Mm -hmm. <coughs> we are a cell therapy company. Okay. We purify cells from placenta mm -hmm. after full-term delivery. We expand the cells and we use the cells to treat variety of different clinical indications. Okay. And in terms of the disease that, you, that your cells are targeting, what, are, what disease are you targeting or are you trying to heal? So we have a robust pipeline of indication. Okay. We are currently have a four clinical programs that are running in three different areas. Mm -hmm. The first area is uh, cardiovascular disorders, mainly peripheral arterial disease, mm -hmm. or people know that as diabetics complication due to heavy smoking or obesity. Okay. We are treating patients in one of the indications, a very late stage patients, people that are facing either amputation or death. Ah, okay. We actually inject ourselves to these patients and assisting the recovery of their limbs, of their legs, and uh, by that saving the life of these patients. Okay. The other indications that we are involved in is the orthopedic area. Mm -hmm. We just, uh, last month, we released a very good data. We were able to show that injecting our cells into to a muscle, mm -hmm. we are able to improve the muscle force by 500% versus okay. this placebo. Uh, that was for uh, uh, the muscle injury. Mm -hmm. And the third indication is the pulmonary. We have a pulmonary hypertension mm -hmm. that we are doing with cooperation with uh, United Therapeutics. Okay, so uh, now talking of your placenta cells, there's one thing that struck me. I think you brought some... Uh, uh, yeah. some the samples sample. here. Uh, yeah. So where do you get your placenta cells? you manufacture them? Do you get them for the human bodies from hospitals? Explain to me, please. So until we get the, the placenta cells into this uh, vial, mm -hmm. we actually get the placenta from the most beautiful place on earth, if I can say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we get the placenta from a uh, full-term delivery, after okay. a healthy delivery. Okay. Uh, the mother has to sign the consent that she's willing to donate the placenta. Okay. And uh, one thing that I can mention, two things, actually, the parents still can keep the umbilical cord blood. Uh -huh. As you know, many, many parents today keep the umbilical cord blood of the baby. Mm -hmm. And for one placenta, we can get 10,000 doses because we oh. expand the cells. So one dose will be three bottles like that, three vials like that. Okay. So we can get 10,000 doses from one placenta. So that's a very va available raw material. Excellent. Uh, so uh, in terms of... Um, this, those three diseases that, that your cells are able to heal. Um, what disease are you actually focusing on your most attention and uh, will you be able to move forward quickly? Yeah. So as I said, we have four clinical programs four running. Years. Yeah. Um, in 2014, mm -hmm. you're going to see us moving to more and more clinical trials, phase okay. two clinical studies. We intend to initiate study in preeclampsia. That's a very interesting indication for us. Mm -hmm. And also based on the clinical data that we got from the orthopedic disorder, we intend to initiate another one or two orthopedic disorders clinical trials this year. Mm -hmm. So we want to expand our pipeline to have a more robust pipeline of, of, of indication in the clinical phase. Mm -hmm. And that's the way that we want to move forward with the company. Okay. Uh, the way that we want to, move to make business and to expand mm -hmm. the, the, the revenues and the mm -hmm. becoming a big company we are in some of the indication we are entering into licensing agreement with different companies. Okay. So we need to have a, a good, a wide enough, a robust enough mm -hmm. pipeline of indication so we can partner on different uh, clinical trials. Okay. Uh, two points that are really interesting that you just mentioned here in terms of revenue. Uh, you're already generating revenues. Uh, do you have a, a forecast for this quarter and when do you intend to actually make some profit? That's a good question. <laughs> <coughs> so even though we are a clinical stage company, mm -hmm. in the R&D phase, we are generating revenues. And we are basically can do that because of our business model that from one hand, some of the indication will develop until approval, but some of them we are partnering with pharmaceutical companies. Okay. So the revenues are coming from the United Therapeutics Agreement. Mm -hmm. We side with them agreement with United Therapeutics, okay. that's a US company, yeah. for pulmonary hypertension. Okay. So we had a classic licensing deal. They paid $7 million in cash. We have milestone payment of another $48 million, and we get royalties once they're going to sell the product. Mm -hmm. So we generate revenue from, from this licensing deal. We just recently entered into another licensing deal. So it's a good combination that we can start to we can inject cash into the company during mm -hmm. the clinical phase 
that allows us to be more flexible from the financial point of view and to make sure that we maintain a strong uh, balance sheet. Yeah. For this quarter, we're going to have similar revenues to what we had uh, in the last, qua uh, last quarter, mm -hmm. about 100,000 uh, okay. US dollar. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that our target as a management is that Pluristan will become profitable during 2016. 16, okay. 2016. That, of course, uh, we have to make sure that we sign additional licensing agreement and we move forward with the clinical pipeline. But until today, we were able to execute our plan, so mm -hmm. I think that that's doable. In terms of the number of players that you need to sign to be able to be profitable in 2016, how would that number be? Is it three players that you need to bring in board or four? or? We took a strategic de de decision mm -hmm. to partner only after phase two data. Okay. After phase two data. So that means that we expect or we want as a management to bring a good large licensing deal. Mm -hmm. We've seen deals that were in the range of several hundred thousand, uh, hundred million of dollars to even a, a to one billion dollar in agreement. Mm -hmm. So once we're going to generate one, one big licensing agreement, that's very quickly can make us profitable. So that's the that's target. Okay, so uh, now you send an agreement with a CHA. Uh, can you ex is it the type of agreement that you look forward to continue to have or are you still in talks right now with some other players other than CHA from South Korea? Yeah. So Cha, 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 Cha. Bio, yeah, they are, they are a large conglomerate in Korea. Mm -hmm. They have revenues of about ten, uh, 2 billion US dollar in, in mm -hmm. South Korea. It's a very, very nice uh, entity. Mm -hmm. And we decided to cooperate with them is to move forward with them basically because we have a lot of interest in what happened in the Far East. There is a okay. lot of activity and we see them as a very good partner in South Korea to move, uh, to move forward with that. So we were able to establish an agreement with them uh, that uh, they gonna we give them licensing to use two of our indications. Mm -hmm. They're going to conduct the clinical studies in Korea. They're going to pay the expense and they, they're going to pay the, the cost of the clinical trials. Mm -hmm. And once they're going to get product approved by the Korean FDA, mm -hmm. we will establish a joint venture 50 50 okay. and they, uh, to market the products in Korea. Two, thing, two, two good things that we have in this agreement mm -hmm. one, we can still use the data to anywhere else outside of South Korea. Okay. And second, we generate, we keep 50% interest in the South Korean market. So that puts us in a very good way, and that's a very strategic decision for us because we will be able to increase our pipeline and to get a lot of clinical data from this cooperation with them. Okay. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, the Wiseman <coughs> Institute, because I know they were involved in you building this uh, placenta yeah. cells, uh, are they still involved, or are you mostly looking for with partnering with other players to be more involved and forget the Wiseman Institute? No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Wiseman Institute, that's one of the most prestige scientific and academic institute in the world. Okay. Mm, a significant portion of the pipeline of blockbuster that you see today mm -hmm. come from the Weizmann Institute. Originally, okay. the technology was ori originated there. Okay. So they are the one that actually uh, they had the first idea and initiated the idea of our three-dimensional technology. Mm -hmm. How you build a system, mm -hmm. how you build a system that mimics the human body environment okay. and allow you to grow cells in a three-dimensional matrix as we are doing. Mm -hmm. There is a huge advantage in our technology, the three-dimensional technology that was invented then. We took it from the academic, from the Weizmann Institute, mm -hmm. and we become a, now a commercial company. We acquired all the technology back in 2007 from them. Mm -hmm. So we hold all the rights and we do not have to pay royalties. Okay. So w they are very dear to us because they were the, the initial inventor Currently, we don't have any immediate project that we work with them, mm -hmm. but that's a very good, very nice institute. Okay. We like them. And you still will continue to port to have them yeah, advise? In, in, the future, in the future, of course. That's a good place to be there. There's a lot of technology that is okay. generating from the Weizmann. So we are definitely, it's important for us to keep a good relationship with them. Excellent. Uh, in terms of your technology, because I know it's a major point that what uh, makes your company stand out. Uh, can you explain to us uh, what's your strategy to protect your patents? Because it's something that uh, the a lot of biotechnology companies are exposed to, patent infringement, etc. So what's yeah. your strategy? Th th yeah, so this. it's true. You can have the best technology in the world, but if you cannot protect it, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work too yeah. much. So we have, as of today, we have 20, 28 patent granted. Mm -hmm. We just announced yesterday receiving another patent. From Australia, right? From Australia. Yeah. And over 100 pending applications. Mm -hmm. We protect our IP in four different layers. Okay. The first layer, and probably the most important one, is the method of production. 
okay. how you produce sales, manufacture sales, expand them in a three-dimensional metrics or mm -hmm. three-dimensional way. That's a, a very robust patterns that we have around this, uh, this method of production and we invest a lot of effort around it. Mm -hmm. So we believe that anyone that will do a three-dimensional expansion of sales will infringe our IP okay. and we're going to block it by the patent. The second, the second layer is the we actually can uh, characterize the sales. We see that sales that come from three-dimensional system, they look different from sales that coming from two-dimensional, mm -hmm. from traditional uh, flask uh, growth of sales. Mm -hmm. So we uh, actually can, the composition of matter, we also protect the composition of matter okay. of the sales. We protect the way that we administer the sale mm -hmm. and we protect also the devices that we develop during the process. Okay. So there is a lot of flares and a lot of protection and we invest a lot of effort in that mm -hmm. because we see a lot of value in that. And I can say, you know, probably that we crossed several due diligences on the IP, mm -hmm. that uh, people challenged our IP mm -hmm. during the partnerships, etc. And we say that w I can say that we did very well and we, s we are confident that our IP is strong and solid to protect us later on. Okay. So let's say you have to do a partnership with a company in, I don't know, in India, for instance. Do you have to file a patent there for the first layer that you just talked about? I it depends. There it depends. are the IP events. You can have other protection on the marketing okay. or, the way the or the place that you actually uh, produce the sales. Mm, okay. So we are trying to define you. You cannot file the patents all over the world. No. <laughs> That's very costly. Yeah. So we are trying to define the main territories that we have the main, the main interest in and to make sure that we close them correctly. And what are they, those main territories that you're, that you're talking about? Of course, about? that's the US yes. and Canada and the in Europe. Is a, we also invest a lot of effort in Japan and South Korea. Okay. We see a lot of change in, in the fries in the, in the regulation and okay. legislation. Today, the Japanese actually said in the last few months that they will approve for marketing mm -hmm. cell therapy product following good face to data. Okay. So that's very interesting. Okay. So we have to make sure that we maintain focuses in all the territories that can uh, generate uh, revenues and significant business value for us. So, uh, y your company has competitors, right? But uh, what makes your company stand out compared to your competitors? For an investor who's looking at this interview and wants yeah. to know why should he consider Pluristem Therapeutics compared to its competitors, why would you, why would you tell him to convince him that we actually yeah. are better or yeah. have an edge to, our, to their competitors? So first of all, it's a good news. Mm -hmm. I think that if you have a competition, it means that what you're doing is interesting. Yeah. So we like the, that we have competition. We actually consider them as peer companies and not competitors yet. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think that we are stand out. We have, I can identify four different companies that we look at the peers or company. Mm -hmm. There are many, there are dozens of other companies that involve in cell therapy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But when I'm looking at companies that are doing cell therapy as we do, off-the-shelf product, no match is needed. We have Mesoblast, this is Australian company. Okay. Um, the thing that I like best about Mesoblast is their market cap. Okay. They have two billion dollar, almost two billion dollar in market cap. They are in, uh, just entering into FS3 studies mm -hmm. for a cardiac indication. And uh, I'm looking in there and my shareholders are looking at Mesoblast and we understand the potential benefit or the potential valuation pl for Pluristem on the short or medium terms, because we think that the clinical stage is similar, mm -hmm. and we see that they are at two billion dollar, and that's that's very good. Okay. Other is that's a U.S. company, and last but of course not least is Celgen, oh. a big Celgen. Okay. They have a division which is Celgen C C CCT. Mm -hmm. They are having sales also from from placenta. Okay. I think that we stand out significantly from all the, all of these companies is by our manufacturing process. All of them. Today have the, the two-dimensional technology mm -hmm. that's, uh, you know, they are produced sales on a flask, expand sales on, on flask. Mm -hmm. We believe that it's nice, but a relatively limited technology. Our three-dimensional technology gives us a significant advantage. Okay. We can produce trillion or trillion of sales in high quality, high quantities, mm -hmm. and we can control the process. So this is something which is uh, very meaningful. And I see that the biotechnology, the, the cell therapy, industry mm -hmm. uh, looks more and more mature. Okay. There are over 500 clinical studies running as of today okay. in cell therapy, and eventually manufacturing is going to matter once you get product approved. Okay. And I think that we, are, uh, we have the best advantage in manufacturing. Excellent. Now for 2014, what are the projects that you will be working on and what should we expect from Pluris System in 2014? Um, so I'll go back for 2013 <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> at first. Uh, in 2013, we invested a lot of efforts in building our uh, capacity or our manufacturing capabilities. Mm -hmm. We built our new GMP facility. 
that's the most advanced facility in the world. That's okay. beautiful. You should come and see it. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> in 2014, we're going to invest a lot of effort in increasing and stressing our pipeline of indication. Okay. We're going to enter to additional two or three clinical indications, as we said, preeclampsia, orthopedic, and other area. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we are shifting indication from the preclinical to the clinical phase, because eventually investors and in the uh, can expect that once we're going to have a rob robust pipeline in, mm -hmm. in, in the clinical phase, that means more partnership and more product approved in the market. Okay. So that's, that's gonna what's going to happen this year. Excellent. Uh, so, Mr. Yane, thanks a lot for, <coughs> for coming by. I wish you guys a lot of good luck and please come by for a follow-up. Okay, I will. Thank you Thank very you. much.